All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strangler Power. So I wanted to make a video today about Bill Pearl. Now, Bill Pearl is a bodybuilder who has won the NABA Mystery Universe competition five times. I mean, he competed primarily in the 1950s and the 1960s. Now, as I said in a previous video, I'm going to be making more videos on Mr. Universe winners because in the 60s and 70s, uh, well, pretty much up until 1971, um, the NABA Mr. Universe was the premier bodybuilding competition and it was not the Olympia. So the NABA Mr. Universe was actually more popular, more prestigious, and just had a lot more history than the Mr. Olympia at that point in time. Um, so for a very long time, it was really the, you know, the defining title in bodybuilding. So that's what I wanted to start making a video series um, about past Mr. Universe winners because in many cases, some of them were just as good, if not better, than some of the Mr. Olympia winners from the early days. So a lot of these guys, I think, deserve attention. And Bill Pearl is certainly one of those guys. So not only was Bill Pearl a very successful bodybuilder, but he's also a very successful author as well. He wrote the bodybuilding book, Keys to the Inner Universe. Um, so you can find this book on Amazon still. I actually have an autographed copy of this book. Um, it's an amazing book. It has over 1,500 different exercises broken down into how to do the exercise. Um, and basically what the book is, is just kind of uh, organized by body part. So it has each body part that you can train. Then it kind of breaks down every possible exercise that you can do um, for each body part. And then it lists all the equipment that you need and just all the different variations of the exercise. It's an amazing book, especially if you're just getting started in bodybuilding and you're not really sure on how to train and isolate specific muscle groups. So I highly recommend if you're watching this video and you have not read Keys to the Inner Universe that you go buy it. Um, if you haven't seen my video, I have a bodybuilding library series on this channel where I go through different bodybuilding books and kind of give you a brief summary of them. I have a video on this channel about Keys to the Inner Universe. I'll link that video in the description below if you want to check that out um, and see if the book is a good fit for you. So later on in his life, he also wrote several other books, including Beyond the Universe, which is an autobiography, um, The Bill Pearl Story. So I highly recommend that book as well. Um, so he actually became a vegetarian at age 39. So a lot of people mistakenly think that throughout his entire bodybuilding career, he was a vegetarian. But when he was age 39, that was when he quote unquote retired. So that was when he took a brief hiatus from the sport. So that was when he was really past his prime in terms of his competitive years. And he'd only go on to compete one more time in 1971 at the age of 41. So really he only competed once as a vegetarian bodybuilder. So I'll give you guys a brief competition history that this guy had, and then I'll get to the 1971 Mr. Universe competition, which is probably the most important competition of his career. I will get to that last. So he won the 1953 Mr. California, the 1953 Mr. America, the 1956 Mr. USA, the 1953, 56, 61, 67, and 71 Mr. Universe competitions. And that very first Mr. Universe competition he won was the Amateur Universe, and he won that at the young age of 22 years old. So he was two years younger than me when he won that Mr. Universe competition. Um, his competition weight was five foot or his competition height was five foot ten, and he weighed between 235 and 245 pounds on stage. He had 21 inch arms and a 53 inch chest. So also during his competitive bodybuilding career, he was known for doing you know feats of strength and different strongman stunts like blowing up hot water balloons, bending steel bars, and there's even one incident where he ripped a steel license plate. Or I guess they're probably aluminum but he ripped a license plate from a car. He just ripped it in half with his bare hand. So he did all kinds of feats of strength like that as well, in addition to his bodybuilding career. So that 1967 Mr. Universe that I mentioned earlier, that would be the year that he quote unquote retired and he took a brief hiatus from the sport. So he was 37 when he retired at that 1967 Mr. Universe. Then he would come out of retirement in 1971 to compete at that 1971 Mr. Universe. So 1971 was a very important year for bodybuilding, uh, not only at that Mr. Universe competition, but also at the 1971 Mr. Olympia, which would follow this Mr. Universe competition. So that 1971 Mr. Olympia that year following this competition was actually the first Mr. Olympia where the IFBB implemented their non-sanctioned policy. So that non-sanctioned policy meant you could not compete in any other organization's competitions or you would be disqualified or banned from competing in the IFBB competitions. So I think one of the main reasons for that was actually specifically the 1971 Mr. Universe, which Bill Pearl won. So again, Bill Pearl was 41 years old when he won that show. And supposedly 
Arnold was actually supposed to compete in that 1971 Mr. Mr. Universe, but apparently Joe Weider saw how good Bill Pearl was looking leading up to that show, and he didn't want his champion uh, in the making, Arnold, to get beaten at a rival, you know, competitor show. Um, so he pulled Arnold, he pulled Arnold out of that show and didn't want him to compete against Bill Pearl and get beaten. So that's why Arnold didn't do the 1971 Mr. Universe. However, even though Arnold didn't compete. Um, several past and future Mr. Olympias did compete in the 1971 Mr. Universe. So Sergio Oliva competed, Frank Zane competed, and Chris Dickerson competed, and Bill Pearl beat all three of those guys. So there's a lot of speculation that Bill Pearl is actually the reason that the IFBB created that non-sanctioned policy because they couldn't have their Mr. Olympia champions going to other competitions and getting beat by guys from different organizations because Bill Pearl was not part of the Weeder Empire at all. And he destroyed those guys. Sergio Oliva had already won the Mr. Olympia several times at that point in time. And, and Bill Pearl just destroyed them. So I just think the Weeders didn't want that reputation of there's another competition out there. It's better than the Olympia. And the guys winning that competition are beating Mr. Olympia winners. So I think that's the reason that they really implemented that non sanction policy. And if you go back and watch my video about the 1971 Olympia, they actually disqualified Sergio Oliva for competing in that 1971 Mr. Universe. And in 1971, Arnold was the only competitor that competed in the 1971 Olympia. So everybody else was banned or disqualified and Arnold was the only competitor on stage that year. So again, I think Bill Pearl is a very important part of bodybuilding history, even though he's outside of the IFBB and outside of the weeder um, kind of industry. But he's still alive today at the age of 86. So if you haven't seen any videos or photos of him, I, I'd highly suggest you guys go check him out. I mean, he's got a lot of great books out there. There's a lot of great posing videos out there of him. And he's put out a lot of great information over the years. So please go check him out. Um, so thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.